Welcome back everybody to another exciting Lord Duckman production. There's a lot going on in this video. It's the end of the day already and I had to cut a new intro because none of it made any sense. <laughs> but anyway, stick around through the video. There's a lot going on in here. You'll see it all as it uh, unfolds right before your eyes. Like you like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. We are having our final walk around on this car. I just need to make sure that underneath all the seats and everything that uh, I didn't forget any tools in here. You know, leave anything that doesn't belong to this car. The owner may be coming for it later today. Cold morning here this morning, by the way, guys. 35 degrees, really cold for Florida. I'm actually wearing a sweater right now because well, it hasn't hardly warmed up. Well, looking around in here. I said I can stick my head underneath those seats and see if there's any tools. I don't see any over on this side. <clears throat> Nothing in the back there, but that battery is not staying because that battery belongs to that square back. So, all right, well, looks like it's all there. Make sure nothing in the engine compartment's out of place. Yeah, it looks like everything's there. Yep, nothing missing. Good. Okay. And then lastly, well, let's go ahead and make sure it runs. This is always fun. Yeah, trying to get in here. Cool. Make sure we're not here. There we go. One key. This is a uh, double pump. Turn the key. Hang on a second here. What's going on? Steering was locked. Alright. Turn key. Here it is. Fired right up. Idiot lights went out. The gas gauge is working. Yeah, we got all the lights on this thing working, even the dome light is working. And when you open and close that door, this light goes on and off via the switch down here, like it's supposed to. All right. This stuff is rickety. Make a little noise, a vibration. We have four ways. There you go. Turn signals. Turn signal that way. I wonder why it's going fast that way. We might have a bulb back no, up. We'll check that. <coughs> Horn's marking. We know we got brake lights and stuff too. Now let's have a look around and see what's going on with the lights because something must be up. Well, while we're waiting for the owner to come around for the Super Beetle, let's go ahead and have a look in here and I'll show you a little bit of what's going on. Yeah, but that whole rusted area up in there it was all rotten. Well, I cut all that rot away and I cleaned up, cat pissed, de rusted, and painted the inside in there so that way the inside has a layer of paint that it never had before. I don't think those are very well covered because it's like an interior structure, it's an interior wall, so it's kind of hard for them to get a coating on there. Anyway, the floor on the inside of the trunk was rotten. Now, yeah, I know it's still rusted around the edges. I have to hit that with a wire wheel and clean it up. See, I started to over here where I did the same thing for that hole, and then I cut patch panels for these, which were going to panel bond into place because we didn't want to go and gut this thing and just start cutting it all apart, but that's a perfect fit. This one here is real nice too because there's that lip that's up underneath there. I'll try to do this with one hand, I probably can't, but anyway, that's the gist of it. It goes under the lip, and then these little uh, flaps that you see on the corners there, they kind of flip under the hinges, and I still have to clean up the buzzy edges on that yet. But anyway, once that's clipped into place, a little bit of panel bond that goes in there. I'll use the battery as ballast. I have some more weights I'm going to stick on top of it. We'll get it all essentially glued into place using the panel bond epoxy, which is hard as a rock. But again, only after I remove all the rust and whatever paint is still on it. You see, I cleared the surface on that also. So that way this is ready to rock and roll in there and should be glued in. There's a little corner in there. I still need to cut out a little bit of rust. So I'll cut that piece out also finish wire brushing in here, get all the rest of the rust out, and then I think it's ready for a uh, proper install. I think your chicken's running up behind me. Yeah, they must be on the other side of the fence there doing some troublemakers. <laughs> Alright, well that's it for here. So I'm going to do a little clean up in here, and then uh, I'll come back when we get these things glued so you guys can see some progress. That's first. I you have to push down, right? No, only down for reverse. Only down for reverse. Yeah, only down for reverse. So, wait, so just pull it over to the left. Wait, you might 
might be in a gear. Yeah, you look like you're in neutral air. Okay, so now I, I go to the left and then forwards. So I'm trying to go left. That's probably as far left as it goes. F left and then forwards. Not the force. That should be it. Okay. And ease on. Good to see another young one. Good to see another young person learning how to drive stick. <laughs> Hi. Nice to see one of my projects rolling. <laughs> shift, shift, shift. <laughs> At least he didn't stall it. Got a Dodge with a flat tire. You know, I see a lot of that flat tire driving nonsense in this neighborhood for some reason. And here he comes. What'd you think? That was awesome. <laughs> Wasn't it? <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> that was so fun. Good to hear. Everything was okay? No problems shifting or anything? No. Good. Great. Good. I don't know if you need to adjust the seat any either. I hardly fit in there. <laughs> no, I mean, it's perfect enough. I'd be cutting and welding on the seat just to get in and out of it. <laughs> but I got about 100 pounds on you, so... <laughs> I mean, that was fun. Good. Good, good. Don't need to yep, no oil leak around the dipstick, so I think I solved that. Good. Yep, not leaking any puddles either. Good news. Yeah, I gave it a good, a good amount of gas there. Good. Good. Excellent. Well, I think yeah. it's going to treat you well. As I was saying, as long as you know how to do the uh, quick maintenance on these things and how to work on them and everything else, I think you'll be fine. Yeah. Our tech session is this Saturday, too. I don't tech know if you'll session? be out this way. Yeah, we get together and we work on each other's cars. Oh, nice. We talk cars. Volkswagen guys do car stuff and, you know, little pointers, little things. If you need an adjustment here and there. Actually, Saturday might have been a good day to pick it up. You could have hung out with us for a little while. <laughs> is, is that like once a month? or? Once a month. First Saturday of the month, typically. Check our Facebook page, Rare Air uh, Volkswagen Club. Okay. And you'll find us. Rare Air Emerald Coast Volkswagen Club, rather. There is another Rare Air out west somewhere. But we're the original one. <laughs> well, I'm about to... Well, Ke Kelly's hopefully get, getting her car. And then they'll have this one. I'm Good. about to move to Colorado. Yeah, I heard. They would... I think that's something that they... Snowboarding, huh? Come all the way down here on a Saturday. And... <laughs> It'd be an adventure. I mean, there's lunch served and everything. I mean, you can't beat it. Yeah. And it's it's way... We, we get a lot of people with brand new... Uh, well, brand new to them, Volkswagens that don't know how to do the maintenance stuff. We uh -huh. show them how to do oil changes and adjust points and, mm -hmm. you know, distributor caps, wiring, uh, just, we go through the whole works. It's way better to hear from you guys than on YouTube. It is, that's a fact. Although you see me on YouTube, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look up YouTube anything, you'll find me somewhere, I guarantee you. <laughs> a little sad to see it go, as I've been telling my audience, I actually, um, this one grew on me. Yeah? This, of all the cars that I've had here, this is the one that grew on me, the one that I liked in the end that I kind of wanted to stay. <laughs> I'm surprised it didn't give you more trouble. Oh, it gave me a lot of trouble. Okay, well. <laughs> Don't be fooled. It gave me a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of trouble there, but it all came together. Yeah. It all came together. There was a lot of afternoons. There was a lot of swear words said in that side of that car. So if it could share what I said to you, you wouldn't be pleased in my behavior. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it took a lot of sorting through. As I told you, I blew a lot of fuses along the way. I blew a lot of fuses because the wiring was <laughs> all yeah, kinds of nuts. You had to make this <laughs> compatible with that. And the... That sucks, too, because you paid like $1,800 for that new wiring harness and get those guys put it up in there. Well, it's a good harness. It was for the wrong year, though. So there's those, a few things that are missing. That we got it from in, they were uh, hooting a holler and just... There's a few things that are missing from it. I probably should give you the disclaimer on that. Your rear window defroster doesn't work. There's no wiring for it. It's just it's not there. There's a switch on the dashboard for it. Underneath the back seat on the opposite side of the battery, there's a relay. That's what's supposed to wire into it. But there's none of the wiring is there for it, so it won't work. So keep a rag. 
Okay. It's always good to keep a rag anyway because these windows on these things, they tend to fog up because they're so close to your face. They just, they fog up. So yeah. <laughs> keep that in mind. <laughs> and um, the other thing was your backup wiring harness wasn't there either. So I improvised and made that work. With backup wiring? Like- backup lights, little white lights oh, in the back. literally backup. Yeah. So those come on now where they didn't before. Some of the wiring was there. Some of it was not. It's kind of an independent harness from the rest of the car. So I've sorted that out, fixed what wasn't there, which was just a couple of jumper wires here and there, and I fixed that, and it's good to go. You also had a wire in there for the uh, engine wiring harness. It was wrong, so I made a new one. <laughs> so if you see the wiring in there, you're not missing anything. Everything's on the way it belongs. I just made a better one. Cool. It's supposed to have three plugins to it, one to the uh, opposite sides of the carburetor, so two, and then one over the coil, and it was only a single. So I don't know how that would have worked, but anyway, disregard it. It is in your stuff. Just okay. you don't need it unless you want to keep a spare wire around for something. But <laughs> so... Moving forward, you said alignment. I took note of the, the Mexican... Um, Mexican seal. I'll Mexican. give you links for that stuff. Okay. And I'll show you the video where I installed one. And you said uh, carburetor might need adjusting eventually. Carburetor may need a uh, upgraded jet. You'll know as you get this thing when you start driving and you get a little warmer. Okay. So like I said, if you get on that throttle and it gives you a hesitation and you have to ease in on the throttle to get it up to speed versus being able to just romp it and go, yeah. then it probably needs a bigger jet. Okay. And they're real easy to change out. I haven't done a video on that yet, but uh, it's so easy. It's like a five or ten minute thing, really. Okay. You just take a side off the carburetor, keep a little cup underneath that's going to catch the gas, yeah. and then screwdriver in it and flathead. Okay. And wind it back out and pull it out of there. <clears throat> yeah. All right, well. Otherwise, it's rocking and rolling. I mean, you can drive it once you get that alignment on it and seatbelts, dude. <laughs> Put may, your seatbelts in it. <laughs> well, not maybe. Tell the world you're safe. You wear a seatbelt, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Seatbelts. Yeah. yeah. Okay, guys. Seatbelts. <laughs> Unless it's uh, 67 and under, then you don't have to have them by <laughs> law here in the States. Yeah. <laughs> 68 was the year they started them, but 67 and a half, a lot of them started to have seatbelts. So before that, I think it was a dealer option or something, but nonetheless. I have these white wall inserts at home that I try to put on, but they ended up not working. They didn't seat right. Is yeah. that no. why that tire was off the rim? No, I... Because uh, that's what you're supposed to do, take them off the rim. Yeah, but... I, and then I had... Because they didn't work, I had them reseated. So I think... Okay. They, I mean, either way, it was just seated bad. But okay. I did take it back afterwards because... It, Good. But yeah, to put them on, you have to knock the uh, the bead off, yeah. break the seal on the tire, and then put the thing in and put the tire back together. Yeah, so that's still. I have the hubcaps for them, but it looks real good with the hubcaps and the white walls. I've seen I, a. I, I kind of like the way it's looking right now. It's kind of cool with the. Yeah, it looks great. Your hubcaps are in there too. You can put them on if you want. They're inside. All your wheels are tightened down. I tightened all the lug bolts on them, so all that's been gone through. I just want to put one on. <laughs> I mean, how could you not? <laughs> Oh, you picked the ugly one. Is, is that the yeah, it's the ugly one. All the rest of them look so much better than that one. Oh, wow. That's a, that's a, I'm, I'm like, okay. Even even if I take the beat up one, that one looks good. It looks good. Yeah, it's shiny. Yeah. It's shiny. <clears throat> how, do you know how much a, a new a new set would cost? Oh, nowadays there's, you can get a good stainless steel one, I think around 200 bucks. Okay. Yeah, I think they run around 200 bucks. I mean, these look great. Yeah, those aren't bad. Those really aren't bad. I mean, I wouldn't complain. That was the ugliest of all of them. The rest of them were pretty good. If you want to clean rust off of them, get the finest steel wool you can buy, like triple zero or quadruple zero, a little bit of dish soap, scrub them down, the rust comes right off. Okay. And um, you can do that on your mirror, too. Scratch like, will that hurt the like, chrome? The no, spin, like, it won't the scratch shininess? the chrome. Nope, it makes it shinier. Okay. <laughs> the steel wool is actually softer than the chrome is. The chrome is a harder metal. My, my, my bumpers. Oh, okay. My, Which, my, by the way, I don't know if you can mount bumpers on here. That's what I was looking at earlier when you were. Uh, yeah, I don't think you, you can. The wiring. Because somebody did some rust patching underneath there, and the flanges where they're supposed to bolt on, they're not there anymore. Yeah, that was us. That was us. Oh, you did the welding? Yeah. Okay. But the the rear. Yeah, the rear looked the same way. The uh, flanges are missing. They are. Yeah, they were missing. Maybe not on both sides, but. Well, that one's got one. Yeah, th these are good. These, yeah, maybe I'm I know, wrong. I know these got yeah, the, They come out, and then you put the, those on, but I, that's what I was looking at. Yeah, I'm wrong. The flanges in the front end are not there. Well, you know. I mean, you can improvise. You could put some, uh, what are those things called? Riv nuts. You know what a riv nut is? Uh -huh. It allows you to, what you do is you put the bumper in, you have somebody hold it, 
and then you make your marks where your bolts are supposed to be, you pull it back out, and then you drill holes where the bolts go, then you put the rivet nuts in the holes, and then using a rivet gun, you stamp them in place, and that gives you a threaded Just hole. Just a normal rivet gun? Well, no, it's a rivet nut gun. Okay. I'll give you links to these things if you'd like. Okay. And then, uh, then you should be able to run them in. I mean, the middle that was in there looked pretty tough. It was just missing the flanges with the bolt well, holes in them. Wait, that's the horn right there, yeah? Correct. That yeah, bumper goes in behind it, or above it, or next to it, or something. Okay. It's not the, they're not the biggest. Uh, He's had the big, ugly shock bumpers, too. Yeah. That's why I was like... <laughs> I mean, I kind of like it without the... I don't mind it without. Well, you got other options, too. You can get some T-bars. T-bars? Yeah, they, I'll show you a picture of them, but they're uh, a little chrome strip that just kind of comes out like this, and then there's a, a vertical thing that comes out of it. So that gives you a little T-bar, and then you can just bolt them in there with some self-tapping screws, really. You don't have to go too crazy on it and put your rubber caps back on. Yeah, VW Beetle T-bars, or sometimes they call them Nerf bars. Even though I guess a Nerf bar is more like something you find on a truck, but... But yeah, here it is. 74 Stupid Beetle. You see him? Yeah. Oop, don't flood it, hold it down. Yeah, I think you flooded it by pumping it too much. <laughs> Remember I said double pump? No more than that. Oh, you, you didn't hear him at all? You just flooded it. You yeah, I think you pumped it too many times. Hold it to the floor and turn the key. Turn the key off and on again. Safety feature. There it is, and all that smoke. Yep, it flooded. <laughs> That's a bad place to stand. Uh, what? That's what I was trying to see. Yeah, I wouldn't stand there. <laughs> You're gonna have to. Can you can you turn a little bit? All right, yeah, straight now. No. Back up a little bit. You gotta spread your ramps out. Yeah. Wait, wait. Yeah, wait a second. Up. Actually, probably straight up like that. Oh! <laughs> you push down, it has the, the diagram in the front. You push down, and it's to the left. That's the Volkswagen owner pop quiz. Push right. the shifter straight into the floor, over to the left, and back. You probably don't need to go in reverse though because I just fixed your ramp. I think you can ah. just roll straight up. Okay. Just ease it a little bit to the left, maybe an inch or so. Alright, straighten it up. Straighten up, straighten up. Yep, come forward. Probably come forward a little more. I feel like you put a little weight on the tongue of the trailer. That would go forward just a little bit more. You think? Yeah. It'll balance the weight on the trailer a little better. He, he said to go forward a little bit more to balance it out better. We can just push it. <laughs> Is it Don't future? push there, you will dent that. No. Don't push there, you'll dent that. <laughs> Don't push here either? Right here. Not there, on the edge. If you push here, you'll dent it. If you push that, you'll dent it. Just okay. heads up, so. And he goes. That's good. E-brake. Most of the weight in these is right in the uh, the rear. Your balance point's right about there. So you kind of want your balance point over the tongue. Or not the tongue, the axle of the trailer. So. That'll get you. You're in a good spot. All Always right. learning. Always learning. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, they're very rear heavy. The engine and stuff is all back there. Although most of your parts oh. are up front under the hood. I so. lost that 30 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Squeezed out. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. It wasn't but 10 years ago, I was as skinny as you. In fact, I might have weighed less, who knows. <laughs> All right, let's, uh... Here it goes. Another happy car. Bye-bye, 74 stupid beetle. The one car that I saw all year long, the one that I hated it when it got here, and the longer it was here, the more I loved it. I kind of miss this one already. <laughs> all right. Like you like it, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to plug the ding about this to get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different videos and social media links. And if you want to contact me, DuckmanCycles at DuckShit.net. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Look at that. Just in time. There he is. <laughs> next project. Oh, boy. Where do you want it? All right. Isn't it nice when a plan comes together? That's right. The next vehicle actually showed up right after the first one left. When does that ever happen, guys? I mean, when does that ever work out? I'm serious. <laughs> anyway, this one, this one has the notorious C-pillar rust. So what I'm going to have to do here is I'm going to cut into this and we're going to scoop out all that foam that's inside of there. We're also going to replace or repair or actually completely patch over these um, crescent vents. And I know that detracts from the original of this vehicle, you know, it's just bleh. I hate these things. The owner wants a car that's not going to rust and these things have a tendency to get moisture built up inside of them and it's not just because of the foam but they'll drip and then they rot this out and then they rot out all the way down here. So in order to eliminate that or to serve it from never having that problem again we're just going to patch this so we're going to do that probably one of two ways i'm either going to cut out the complete thing and make it patch and weld it or we might just use a little panel bond on there flange the edges of it and click a little panel in and be done with it without too much too much damage to the original paint that's on here well i guess it's not original paint i think it was originally red and somebody blew it over it but when i say original i mean the paint that it came with when it arrived here not very neatly sprayed, they missed the spot. All right, also, there's a hole down underneath the seat there, or back seat area, right in through here. So we get in there and we'll patch up some of that stuff. We'll see how big of a deal that is when I start cleaning it up. I don't know what it's gonna be, but that's the majority of the rust that's on here. This body, otherwise, you might remember these floor pans when Gabriel came by, or Gabriel as I call him, and we did these floor pans a couple years ago, and uh, well, you might remember he was the guy that I did one side, and uh, he didn't show up in time to help me with the other side. When he showed up later, we got the other side finished. So anyway, those are the floor pans that we did. So it's nice to see one of my projects come back to get completed or more completed than it was. All right, look at this side real fast. Check this out. This one over here, this area, I'm pushing here, and I don't hear any crispy crunching, which is good. But when we cut into this, I'm gonna dig in there and pull out as much of that foam as we can because you know what happens the inside of this area is not painted so that foam gets in is in there so the foam is in there coating the inside what happens is if any moisture gets into that foam it wicks to the edge touches the metal and then slowly erodes its way out and that's what happens with these so anyway we'll dig out as much of the foam as we can and patch up the uh, crescent vent over there I don't see any rust down here to the bottom this overall this is a good specimen this is a nice car. It's good and solid. I didn't see the uh, A pillars have no problem. See, you look down at the bottom there when you lift the door. If this pillar starts to swim around, you know you've got issues. This car doesn't do that. There's no rust in the trunk at all. I looked down inside of there with the owner and didn't find any rot underneath the spare tire. I mean, there's just no rust on this car otherwise. It's in uh, pretty healthy shape, except for the hood that don't want to close. <laughs> I didn't see any significant rust around the windows. It all looks pretty good. There's the A pillar down there again. Lift up on the door. See, not swimming. Door is nice and solid. I don't feel any looseness in the hinges. This is interesting. Wires inside the door. Hmm. You might know air cool beetles don't have any wires in the door. No power locks, no power windows. Eleanor will have them. But otherwise, no. Beetles don't have that stuff. And a nice center console. Bonus. That's why that's there. This was somebody's little hook for uh, closing the glove box. <laughs> anyway, that's my project. 
We're gonna get back to this and see how much of this we can get done today. Right now I started clearing off some of the paint from this metal patch panel that I made because this is where the panel bond's gonna stick to and it's nice and rough. So the panel bond would have a nice edge to grab. And all that white shit flew in the back here, so I'm gonna have to blow all that out. So, turn the compressor back on. And guess what? Yeah, if you guess it's unplugged, you guessed right. <laughs> all right, let's try that again. All right, well that about gets it. Everything's panel bonded in there. It's getting kind of dark, so it's hard to film. So we'll wait until daylight, but otherwise, I'm satisfied that that's in there, and an entire tube of panel bond has been utilized for this job. Not very much in those little tubes, it doesn't go very far. But then again, you know what, this stuff does spread paper thin, so you think about it, when you put it between the two panels and you squish it, I guess you really don't need all that much, right? Because I mean, it's not a filler, it's just a glue. Alright, well I gotta unscrew this thing off of here, because I have to save this little white cap, it came off of a new tube, because the old tube, um, I destroyed it when I disassembled it. Oops. <laughs> in fact, look in there, you see? It's part yellow. So actually, we were completely out before it even hit the tip. It wasn't mixing anymore. There was more of the yellow crap than there was of the black crap. Anyway, I'll get that separated out. Anyway, when I pulled that cap off, which I needed to save, the uh, little nozzle which had the mixing tip fell in there. But that entire nozzle that was on there, whole thing got wasted. Whatever product was in there was shot because you can't exactly clean the tip out and save it, you know, put it back in the bottle. And you can't exactly uh, pull the tip off and clean it and expect to reuse the tip or disposal. These tubes are probably not even meant to be used more than once. I used a little bit out of one one day and I put it back and it was just a sloppy mess. I use it again the next day, so anyway, that's panel bond. And there's my expensive panel bond gun that we're keeping. Yes, all right. All right, well, I guess it's gonna wrap up the video for today. What a busy afternoon it's been. Man, getting this thing, well, not done, but getting to the point it's at. Getting a car out of here that was leaving. I can't forget my muffs. <laughs> getting a car out of here, getting another car in here. Yeah, this is the next project. Oh boy, Duckman, what are you getting yourself into now? You have no idea what you're getting yourself into, Duckman. Love hearing that kind of crap. Anyway, I'll be working on this one in the coming, hopefully, week or two. I don't think this will be here too long, although it could develop into a bigger project, who knows. The owner did tell me there's a lot of things he's gonna need help with, so one thing at a time. Let's start with the rust patches, and I guess we'll move on from there. So, leaky, likey, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to plug that dingle bell so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links. And, uh, well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Well, everybody, I wanted to take a moment just to give thanks, and not because it's Thanksgiving season, but rather because just my Patreon exploded last month in a way that I haven't seen these kinds of numbers before. And anything that anybody's given me, I'm extremely grateful for it. I really appreciate it. I mean, just the amount of traffic, like I said, is more in the last month than it has been over the last several years that I've had a Patreon. I don't usually talk about it a lot, I don't promote it a lot, and I've never given thanks to anybody that's followed me up there before. So I wanted to take a moment to shout out to my supporters that take care of me because, well, I think that's necessary. And especially think, since all this noise you hear in this neighborhood is going to go away by the donations you guys have given me because I'm going to be moving this entire setup to the woods to a big shop north of here, away from all the racket. So that way I can make my videos better, I can do things indoors, I can record at any hour of the day, and I can make as much freaking noise that I want with Volkswagens, go-karts, chainsaws, you name it. We're gonna have a dude ranch, and we're gonna tear the place up. And that's the plan, and it's coming. Hopefully in the next couple years, I can't tell you, you know, about the politics that controls the market and the way things are going, but it's close enough that I can feel it, it's close enough I can taste it. I was close enough before a couple years ago, and then 2020 happened. <laughs> I don't need to say anymore, but anyway, special thanks. We're gonna give some shout outs here. Uh, first, I wanna give a shout out to Barry McCauley, Craig Saunders, John Mulhall, Mike Plant, Mountain Horse, Richard Kemp, Wayne Nocton, Willie Oberman, who has been supporting me for a very, very long time. Thank you, Willie. I mean, since the early days of my YouTube. Andy Belcher, Temper Chaco, RH, Slick Rick himself, that's right. John Kemper, Derek Imler, Tom Tom, Todd Webb, Gustavo Gutierrez, Logan, Tony, or TZ, Toby, Mark Villareal, Mark Stevens, Costas Klapas, which is in Greek. I had to translate that because I couldn't pronounce it myself. I couldn't read the characters. So thank you, Costas. I appreciate that. Richard McCullough, 
Kalani Ruiz, Mitch Roberts, Andy Garza, Thundercat, Vincent Harper, Manson My Dog, who I'm happy is on my team, <laughs> Rich McCullough, Joseph Moe, Jody, my boyfriend in Canada, and Richard Rios. What good friends I have, such supportive people. Thank you so much, everybody, for supporting me. Patreon links are down below in the video description. You can also find them up on my website, duckshit.net, if you'd like to help. I mean, even if you only help for one month and you throw one bone at me, just keep in mind that Patreon keeps most of a dollar if you give me just one. <laughs> if you go for like five or ten, I actually keep a larger percentage of it. Patreon cleans me out if you throw just a dollar down. So just, just a warning, if you want to help me and not help the big corporation that is, you probably want to throw it out a little bit more. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for supporting me. Once again, I really appreciate it. Everything that's going into uh, my Patreon is going directly into the account that's put away for, for building expenses and things that I have coming up. Uh, it's not going into these projects. It's not feeding my ducks, although it probably should. Because uh, <laughs> I tell you what, chickens and ducks are getting a little expensive. Oh, by the way, the Eclipse Egg. The Eclipse Egg that... Uh, was laid during the eclipse, at the peak of the eclipse, right in the middle of the day, that I picked up off the ground. It was still warm, it was so fresh. It just hatched. And either it's Luna, or it's gonna be Sol. Luna for girls, Sol if it's a boy. I can't believe that uh, I got me another baby. This marks 10 birds. That's enough, I don't want any more, I don't need any more. They're too expensive to feed. And boy, do they make a lot of noise. In fact, I'm amazed that they're as quiet as they are because when they hear my voice, they usually start screaming in the backyard. <laughs> Well, I guess that's it for now, so we're going to wrap up this video. So, again, guys, licky, likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that dingo bell so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out Duck Shit down there for all my different social media links. Or if you're interested in some merch, this is one of my new t-shirt designs, by the way, for the people that love to tell me they can do it better. Now you can actually have a t-shirt that says that you can do it better. <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone. I appreciate you. We'll see you next time.